came to Japan, to be honest, I wasn't all that excited about sushi. The only sushi that I had ever had was at a small town in Wisconsin. It was just like this cold fish on top of cold rice, and the whole thing was really sad. But then years later, I came here to Japan for the first time, and when I tried the sushi here, it just blew me away. And it was somehow only $1. So what I wanted to do was try sushi at three different levels. $1, $50, and $100. To see what's really the difference between the cheap sushi and the really expensive stuff. I'm really excited about this. I'm also a little bit nervous that we're just gonna be wasting our money because I have no idea what we're doing, but let's get started. We decided to start from the lowest price point, the cheapest in all of Tokyo. Found at the famous chain Kura, known for its $1 conveyor belt sushi. Okay, we're trying to find our little home for today. Cool. Okay, here we are. Wow. So, right, can we... So right, conveyor belt sushi, kaiten sushi, so hopefully why it's named this is pretty obvious, right? Like there's this conveyor belt here of just non-stop sushi deliciousness passing at all times for you more impulse shoppers, which is definitely me. But if you want something more specific, you order it off of this menu right here. Albacore, scallop, fresh beer, press order and then they bow and they say, okay, it's coming. Your order was heard, thank you. As we're waiting here, you can just see the orders like shoo, zip by, and come back. Wasabi, wasabi. <laughs> okay, so each of these plates that we got down here, the tuna, the seared salmon, the not seared salmon, each of them was 132 yen, which right now is 90 cents. So this is actually less than $1 sushi. So this is the tuna right here, 90 cents for two pieces of nigiri. You can just like, you can smell the sweetness off of it right now. The fish itself is a little bit cold. Let's try. You might call me simple, but I think that's delicious. One thing I do wish was that the fish itself was a little bit thicker, but for a dollar, yeah. I think these go in here. I was eating things like California roll. I was terrified of raw fish. But now, now that I've had real good sushi and poke, I can't get enough. I don't pretend to be a sushi connoisseur, so I don't know, but it tastes really good and it doesn't taste fishy, which I think sometimes I worry about when I try sushi from back at home. But it tastes really, really fresh. Ooh, the egg. Yes, please. Now, if you're not into raw fish, which I know a lot of people aren't, but if you're not, you can start with the egg. Let's give it a try. Throw a little sauce sauce on top, it's delicious. This is just so like light and fluffy. Genuinely impressed. This is my jam. I'm not sure that $50 sushi, $100 sushi is gonna change my mind. All right, let's go. So we wanted to find something a little bit mid-range sushi, like the $2 signs on Google, because we just had Kaiten sushi, and while it was awesome, and it was approachable and personable, I think we're looking for like, what's the closest to going to like a sit-down sushi restaurant that you would order? I expect it to be a lot better, but two times better? I, I don't know. We're in Rapongi. I think it might be fancy. We'll see. Looks fancy. Wasabi okay? Wasabi okay. Okay, so we just got in and they're unfortunately closing in like 15 minutes, but this place is super beautiful and swanky. We got the large lunch sushi chef. We got the large sushi set. We got the large lunch sushi set. Wow, that's hard. We got the large sushi 
set for the two of us that we're going to share. We got a variety of different things like tuna, salmon, tamago. I think this is mackerel, which is one of my favorites. I'm going to start with that because, yeah, and it's cooked. Oh my gosh. That might be my favorite piece of sushi that I've ever had. I mean, kaiten sushi is an experience. It's so fun, but this is this is like a date night place. At first glance, it's like two to three times the size of the kaiten sushi that we had, including like the thickness of the fish itself. Every piece of sushi that we had at the kaiten place was cold. Basically, it was just cold and I think that's probably due just to the amount like the quantity that they have to output all the time they're filling up an entire conveyor belt with sushi but here that was room temperature maybe just a little bit under and the flavor just was entirely different than when it was cold I find that really interesting I, I had no idea the variety I I'm impressed Ooh. clearly I'm not fancy enough <laughs> This restaurant surprised us in a lot of ways, but the most surprising part was the price. So we just got the bill, and for all the sushi for the two of us, it was $11.67 US, so. Turns out this $50 restaurant didn't even cost us anything close to $50. I mean, $11 for the two of us to share that sushi platter. I, I don't even know if $11 could get us like a, a California roll <laughs> back at home. Okay, this is it. I'm really excited for this, also kind of nervous. This is our $100 sushi. After looking at a couple of reviews of the place online, I realized that like I'm super duper underdressed for the thing. I think my little brother Jacob put it best when he said that I look like a Scandinavian grandfather. The type of sushi that we're doing tonight is called omakase sushi, which the type of sushi we're eating tonight is called omakase sushi. Why do I keep saying it's sushi? The type of sushi we're eating tonight is called omakase sushi. And we gotta do some quick shopping and then we gotta head over there. Are you ready? We walked in and were lost immediately. There were no menus, no instructions, just a single chef at a counter telling us to sit. Hundreds of little bowls and plates lining the back wall, hunks of fish tucked away under the table in front. In front of us, just a single black stone, absent of the typical self-served soy sauce and wasabi. Turns out that this kind of dining experience is called omakase, which essentially translates to, I leave it up to you. You, being this wonderful man right here, are sushi Sherpa for the evening. Basically, the chef selects and prepares the dishes for you based on their inspiration combined with the freshest, highest quality ingredients available, and then changes the lineup depending on how you react to each different dish that they make. In short, we have absolutely no idea what we are in for tonight. <laughs> and then we received our first finely wrapped present from our sushi chef. Yellow cake. Yellow cake. Yeah, of booty. Yellow We gingerly picked it up, trying our best not to embarrass ourselves by dropping the very first thing he gave us. But immediately, after that first bite, we knew that this was going to be different. I get it now. I get it. He took in our reaction and went back to work immediately, preparing some sort of green, slimy thing that we had never seen before and slicing perfect, not too thick, not too thin pieces of fish, one super humanly smooth cut at a time. The next few courses went by in a flash. We had absolutely no idea what we were eating, but we were totally locked into his every movement. Every small intentional knife stroke, watching him plate the sushi at the perfect angle for picking it up, which was a different angle for left-handed me than right-handed Lisa. It was all just so thoughtful and intentional. Every single thing he served was invariably delicious and just totally unrecognizable. This is abalone, probably? Fish roll sausage? Wow, it's an experience for the mouth. Around this time, somehow 25 courses later, we realized that two hours had just flown by. 
We try the dish. The chef takes in our reaction. He then reaches for what he thinks will be the perfect next dish. Rinse, repeat. And he was right every single time. I keep saying this, but every dish that comes out next is my favorite. And it just keeps leveling up. Well, except for that green slimy one. But something bigger was happening here. Just let me explain. Every single moment of this has just felt like Sushi Chef is just like wrapping up a Christmas present for us over and over and over again. Before this experience, we both honestly kind of looked down on fine dining. We just didn't get it. Why would anyone pay more just to eat roughly the same thing that you could get at a much cheaper restaurant that didn't have all the fancy tables and dark lighting and weird glassware? I mean, fish tastes about the same everywhere, right? No need to pay ten times as much just to feel fancy. But this was something totally different, something much more than just a meal. This was more like going on a delicious roller coaster ride. I feel like it's getting more and more adventurous as we continue. This was so much more than just fancy sushi. <laughs> Like, to be honest, I've always been a little bit intimidated by uni, but this is, it feels, it, it's so nice, and it's creamy, buttery, and it melts in your mouth. It's this is like our 20th course right now. We've been here for almost two hours. To be honest, at this point, this guy has got my full and implicit trust. If he just, like, took a piece of carpet that I saw him cut off the ground and then put it on some rice, I would trust that it would be delicious and it probably would. So we finished up with our dessert. Final course. Two gigantic. So thank you to our sushi Sherpa who had brought us up and back down the delicious sushi mountain safely. And we walked out in a bit of a daze. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I hope so. That was incredible. That was incredible. So let me just start with like what I expected this thing would be. I expected that this meal was just gonna be roughly the same thing that we had in the past two meals, the $50 one and the $1 one, but just like more of it or better or like just a little more refined. But instead what we got was this 20 plus course, just like tour of every possible thing you can do with seafood. It was an entirely different experience from front to back. I didn't expect any of it. All of it was delicious. I was worried about going in and recording, expecting like this intimate, fancy restaurant. And it was very intimate and fancy, but it was also super boisterous. I was proven wrong. Is the food better? Definitely. Is it a hundred times better? I, I don't know. Probably. The big thing that you're paying for is the experience. Down to the wire. Yeah. Dollar sushi versus hundred dollar sushi. Yeah. Totally different things. I think I would do this hundred dollar sushi thing like once a year. I think so too. I would do it again. But I would eat one dollar sushi every single day and I'd be totally happy <laughs> with it. A hundred times? I'm gonna go get some more sushi. See you later.